Now after Nuruddin passed away, Syria just fragmented. All the princes were only interested in their little fiefdom. And they began to side with the crusaders to fight other princes. They were actually giving annual tributes to the crusaders. And the people of Syria were disgusted because they were used to a man like Nuruddin, a powerful, charismatic man. And the people of Syria, they turned to Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi. And this was the time that Salahuddin started on his expeditions. Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi spent longer, understand this, he spent longer fighting Muslims than he did non-Muslim. He fought with Muslims for over 10 years because he understood that if you are divided, you are weak and you are susceptible to invasion. But if you are united, you are strong. And for over 10 years, he fought with other Muslims to unite them. And the other Muslim rulers said to Salahuddin, they said, oh Salahuddin, we will give you money, go back. And Salahuddin said, how can I unite with you people? How can I negotiate with you people when you are in one valley and I am in another valley? The valley that he attributed to them was the value of this dunya, the value of preserving their kingdoms. While the value that he attributed to himself was the value which led to the akhirah, the value of preserving this ummah. And the amazing thing was that the Muslim leaders united with the crusaders to fight Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi. And they released a man who was the greatest arch enemy of Islam, a man called Reginald de Chatillon. For 15 years, this man had been in prison. Nuruddin had left him in the dungeons of Halab. They released him so he would be a thorn in the side of Salahuddin. And what did this man do? Soon as he mustered up an army, he marched on Makkah. And Na'udhu Billah, he was saying, when I reach Makkah, I will bring the Kaaba to the ground. And then Na'udhu Billah, he said, I will go to Medina. And Na'udhu Billah, I will take the camel herder from his grave, speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu And I will bring him back to my palace in Kerok. And I will charge the Muslims to view his body. And the narrations mention that when Salahuddin heard this, he took out his sword, he lifted it to the skies, and he said, by Allah, I will kill Reginald with my own hands. Because he had a deep love for the Prophet Sallallahu And he dispatched an army under Husamuddin Lutlu. And Husamuddin took a navy, he annihilated the army of Reginald, and then he captured his men, he took him to Medina, and he executed him in Medina. And four years after this, Again, when the Muslims and the Christians had a truce, Reginald attacked a Muslim caravan traveling from Egypt to Syria. And what he would do every time he would put a Muslim to the sword, he would say, you believe in Muhammad wasallam. Now ask him to help you. And then he would strike his neck. And when Salahuddin heard this, he again took an oath that he would kill this man with his own hands. And it was upon this occasion, that Salahuddin brought forth an army. And this is the famous battle, the battle of Hittin. And the crusaders brought forth an army. And when Salahuddin consulted his men, he said, what shall we do? Shall we carry on attacking their forts and their castles? Or shall we have a head on confrontation? And they said, carry on attacking their forts. And Salahuddin said, no. He said, we will take him head on. Because none of us knows how long he's going to live. And matters run by what Allah decrees, not what we desire. And each one of us should expend himself. And then he said, Oh my men, fight to please your Lord. Do not fight to please me. And they marched on to the army of the crusaders. The crusader army was considerably larger than the Muslim army. When they reached there, the crusader army was deeply entrenched. And they had barricaded themselves. So Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi didn't rush. He showed what a military genius he was. What he did, he went to a nearby fort. And this fort had the women and the children of the soldiers there. And he lay siege to it. And then he put his back against the sea. Now, the Christian charges were very strong. The Muslims had problems dealing with Christian charges. But tactically, the Muslims were far superior. So what the Christians thought was one charge and Salahuddin will end up in the sea. And this is exactly what Salahuddin wanted them to think. So next morning, they marched. Midsummer. And what Salahuddin Rahmatullah day, he had put arches on the way. And what he did, he poisoned all the wells. When they began to march, these arches began to shower arrows. So many arrows, so many arrows, that their movements became snail pace. 
The march should have taken them eight hours. But by sunset, they were miles away from their destination and thousands of them had perished. And they thought night would bring them relief. But the historians mentioned that Salahuddin Rahmatullah's men had encircled them in a manner that not even an ant could go through. And they mentioned there were two different cries from two different camps. Because all night the arrows carried on coming. So from the Muslim camp, there were the cries of Takbir Allah Akbar. And from the Christian camp, there were the cries of the dying and the wounded. And overnight, Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi bought 400 camels laden with arrows, another 70 waiting. Water was plentiful. The Christians had no water. And next morning, Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi noticed that the brushwood was dry and the wind was blowing in the direction of the Crusaders. So it's midsummer, no water, and they lit the brushwood. And then now they began to choke on the smoke as well. And it was here that the Muslims attacked. And they were reciting the verse, And indeed it is a right upon us that we assist the believers. And then Salahuddin wanted to afflict the final psychological blow. And that was to capture the true cross. It was believed as long as they have this cross, they can never lose a battle. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah sent the entire regiment to capture it. And when the regiment captured it, this totally demoralized the Christians and they fell by the wayside and only 150 of them remained standing. And the Muslims attacked. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah was watching this and his brother was standing next to him. And he said, Alhamdulillah, we have defeated them. And Salahuddin said, not yet. And then he attacked again and the Christians went back. And his brother said, Alhamdulillah, we have defeated them. And Salahuddin said, wait, not yet. When that tent falls, the tent of the king, then we have defeated them. And when Salahuddin Rahmatullah was saying this, the tent fell. And what did Salahuddin do? Did he jump up and down? He descended from his mount and he went into sajda because he understood that victory and defeat is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Dhahbi Rahmatullah says something profound here. He says, this was the greatest victory for the Muslims in Sham since Khalid bin Walid defeated the Romans at the Battle of Yarmouk. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi didn't ease up here. Two days later, he was in Acre, north. Then they took Turan, Haifa, Arsuf, Beirut, Nablus. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi, the reason he took all the ports was so the Crusaders could not get any more reinforcements in. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi marched on his greatest aim in life. And that was the liberation of the holy places. And they mentioned that Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi would very rarely laugh, smile. And somebody asked him, you know, you're the king of Egypt, Syria, Yemen, Lebanon. You'd very rarely smile. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi said, how can I smile? How can food and water taste good to me when Bayt al-Maqdis is in the hands of the Crusaders? I wonder what Salahuddin would say if he was here today. I wonder what he would say about the Muslims and their apathy towards the Holy Lands today. And the astrologers had told Salahuddin, they said, Oh Salahuddin, we have seen in the stars that if you try to take Jerusalem, you will lose an eye. And Salahuddin said, you talking about me losing an eye? I swear by Allah, I will take the Holy Lands, even if it means I walk into Jerusalem blind. And for five days, Salahuddin went around Jerusalem until on the 20th of Rajab, they found an ideal place to lay siege. And for six days, they pounded the city. And on the 26th, Balian came out to ask for terms. And Salahuddin said, no. Salahuddin said, I offered you terms. Initially, you didn't take them. Now the city is mine. And then Balian said, if you do not offer us terms, then we will kill the 5,000 Muslims in the city and we will destroy the masjid. And really, this is a testimony to the greatness of Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi. He could have easily said, do it, do it. And when we take it, you will see what we do to your men, women and children. But he knew that these Muslims had been at the front line for 88 years. They had suffered for 88 years and he didn't want them to go through any more suffering. And Salahuddin, gave valiant terms. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi, he entered Jerusalem on the very day that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered Jerusalem, where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala records in the Quran, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa Pure is he who took his servant from Makkah to Jerusalem 
This was on the 27th of Rajab. Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi entered Jerusalem on the 27th of Rajab. And can you imagine how the Muslim must have felt when they entered? Can you imagine 88 years of persecution? They must have remembered the stories of how living Muslims were catapulted over the walls of Jerusalem 88 years. When they saw the Christian women, they must have remembered how every single Muslim woman was violated 88 years ago. When they entered and they saw the Christian children, they must have remembered the stories of how babies were snatched from their mother's breast and their heads were smashed against the walls. 70,000 Muslims were killed in the masjid in one day until their blood was running up to the knees of those who were doing the butchering. All these memories must have come back to the Muslims. But Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi had a greater memory in the back of his mind. And that was when the Prophet re-entered Makkah. After 13 years of persecution, the Muslims migrated to Medina. And then after 10 days, they were walking into Makkah. And today they were the conquerors. On one instruction, thousands of heads could have been removed from their body. And can you imagine how the Muslim must have felt when they entered back into Makkah? They must have seen the place where Bilal was dragged until his skin would peel from his body. They must have seen that place where Hubba would be made to lie until the flesh on his back would melt. They must have seen that place where two young girls, Lubaina and Unaysa, were killed for what? Because they believed in La ilaha illallah. They must have seen the place where Ammar, Yasir, Sumayya, the entire family would be persecuted. They must have seen all these places. And in the heat of the moment, a Sahabi shouted out, Al Yomu Yomul Malhama. Today is the day of bloodshed. Today is the day of retribution. And the Prophet ﷺ heard this and he said, Oh Saad, come here, change that cry into Al Yomu Yomul Marhama. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of forgiveness. And similarly, Stanley Lane Poole mentioned in his classic that the Muslim king showed the Christians the meaning of compassion. Salahuddin in this early battle only killed one man and 200 Templars. And that man was after the battle of Hitti. Who was it? Reginald de Chatillon. After the battle, they erected a tent for Salahuddin. The king was brought to Salahuddin and Salahuddin gave him some water to drink with his lapping. And then he drank the water and he gave it to Reginald. And Salahuddin became angry. He said, you gave it to him. I didn't give it to him. Because if you gave somebody water, this was an indication you've given him protection in the Arab world. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah walked up to Reginald and he reminded him of his transgressions. And he reminded him of what he said about the Prophet ﷺ. And Reginald said that this is what kings have always been doing. And Salahuddin offered him Islam and he refused. And then Salahuddin said, do you know who I am? He said, I am the representative of the Prophet ﷺ. And I, on this world, take revenge on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ. And then he fulfilled his promise. And then he put 200 other knights to the sword, who were the Knight Templars and Hospitallers. And these men, Knights had taken an oath that they would wipe this earth clean of the infidel Muslims. And Salahuddin said that he would cleanse the earth from them. And he killed 200, put 200 knights to the sword. And Stanley Lane Poole mentioned that when Salahuddin came into Jerusalem, he showed the Christians the meaning of compassion. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayh, he entered the masjid. You know, can you imagine after 88 years, the Muslims are now entering the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that day that we also enter it without it being besieged by the Zionists. Ernal, the Christian chronicle of that time mentioned that when the Christians saw the compassion of Salahuddin, many of them embraced Islam. And then a group of women came to Salahuddin and their husband had been captured in earlier battles. And they said, oh Salahuddin, what life do we have without our husbands? And Salahuddin freed all of them. And then his brother asked for a thousand captives. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah gave him a thousand captives and he freed them. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah said, you will see my generosity. And he said, whoever cannot pay the ransom, he goes to the back gate of Jerusalem. And the historian mentioned that so many people gathered that it was impossible to count them. And Salahuddin left them all go free. And even on this occasion, Salahuddin didn't forget his teacher Nuruddin. 
Nuruddin Rahmatullah alayhi had a pulpit made for the day that Masjid Al-Aqsa is liberated and the pulpit be placed in the masjid. And when Europe had heard that their holy lands had been taken from them, really, Europe went to blaze. Pope Urban II died out of grief. And I say, Subhanallah Salahuddin, you broke the backs of tyrants thousands of miles away.